edition of Trader Talk TV. Today we've got Jordan from Rubicon in the office. Jordan, thanks for coming in today. Thank you for having me. So today we're going to talk about revenue optimization from a publisher standpoint. But before we do that, I want Jordan to give us sort of an overview of what he does at the Rubicon project and you know, what kind of stuff he's working on. Jordan. So I'm Vice President of Product at the Rubicon. Uh, and I have the luxury of picking and choosing some interesting stuff to work on along with Neil, our Chief Scientist. And one of the things that uh, we've been focusing a lot on lately is algorithmic revenue optimization. So we want to just tell you a little bit about that. Okay. So we're going to map back today about sort of uh, the revenue optimization piece. Um, what publishers should be doing in the, the real time space and how it all works together. So I want just to look at map out sort of what you, how you work with publishers and uh, uh, presently revenue optimization against the, the model that's been used by a lot of publishers. The, what we're seeing a lot today is a conventional belief by publishers that they need to aggregate all demand yeah. into one area and have one decision maker mm -hmm. make the award, the, and this is the inventory, right? Yeah. So they aggregate all demand and they've got their inventory over here. And then they award that, that impression to the highest, highest bidder. Yeah. That is not the right approach. Okay. What is the highest approach? bid? Does not equal most well, revenue for publishers, unless unless you consider scarcity, mm. because some of these some of this demand might be pretty common. It might be available fifty percent of the time. Yeah. Some of it might be available. 5% of the time. If all of this was uniform, then highest bid would be the right approach. Mm. But given the fact that you have very scarce elements of demand available in every impression, you want to take that into consideration. And I'll talk a little bit about what that means from a yield curve standpoint. Yeah. And then I'll just really, really go really simple and, uh, and, uh, and, and kind of cement that Hopefully. Okay. So let's think in terms of a yield curve where uh, quantity and price, right? Standard yield curve for most folks is kind of like this, mm -hmm. right? The objective is to take advantage of every, er, everything under the curve. Yeah. They have inventory that they can sell at these different prices That's at true. different quantities and such. Uh, and what they want to do is they want to eliminate large blank spots in here. They want to maximize the volume underneath this yeah. curve, right? Yeah. So the typical approach is to segment inventory, right? And this is, not, this is not unique to online advertising. Airlines do this. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, grocery stores do this. Mm -hmm. Hotels do this as well. So they segment their, 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 their customer base uh, in order to package it and to sell it. Now, when you have mechanisms, and, and the ad server is good at delivering this. The ad server, however, doesn't know the value of the indirect channel. Okay. This is direct channel demand. So yeah. the ad server has line items with different values, right? And it could be, say, a 15 pound CPM, mm -hmm. right? Now, a conventional approach in the market is to reach out to the indirect channel, RTB, and to say, well, I've arrived at a decision that I'm going to serve this 15-pound campaign in order to meet my pacing requirements. Yeah. Can RTB beat that? And if it's more, then yes, you'll award that. What that doesn't take into consideration, though, is maximizing uh, all, of, all of this under the curve. These 15-pound yeah. these direct sale campaigns can often be delivered to a lot of, uh, I mean, they have uh, oftentimes less uh, criteria around the targeting, right? So they can be delivered. Say, say a, a publisher is 40% direct sold. Yeah. They have a lot of leeway and a lot of supply where they can determine, where do I deliver this 40%? I've got 100% to deliver 40%. Mm -hmm. And if they make the decision first based only on a scheduling or a pacing requirement, then what they've done is they've potentially trumped 
uh, an impression that's worth uh, quite a bit. It's very mm -hmm. scarce and worth mm -hmm. quite a bit. Now, let me let me kind of uh, take this down to a really really simple level that we can all understand. I'll stick with the same color. Okay. So, publishers all have multiple users come to their site at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> and that's beard. And so <laughs> that's a beard. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna put big letters. So direct sold ad services. Okay. I don't want to use dollars because I, I don't know how to draw. No, you can't draw euros and I can draw euros and quid. So dollars are fine, I think. Pick your currency. Yeah. In a direct sold basis, it's often the case you and I come to a site at the same time. Mm -hmm. The direct sold views us as as both eligible mm -hmm. to deliver an ad to, yeah. both worth that fifteen dollar or fifteen quid CPM. Mm -hmm. But in RTV, I may be using Safari, um, and I may be worth. I may be worth a dollar. You may be shopping for a new refrigerator, a, a new Chrome. DSLR, yeah. new Lexus. Yeah. Well, maybe not Lexus, but yeah, I get your point. Yeah. And you may be worth $10 there, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. In a decision, in, 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 in this $10 CPM in RTV, that's, that's pretty scarce. Mm -hmm. You don't get that in every impression, no. right? You've got, you, you got a long tail in RTV yeah. volume. So, you know, maybe this is... 5% of all of your volume as a publisher is going to fetch that. Yeah. Whereas, you know, 70% is going to fetch that. Mm. So what ad servers are doing is they're making a decision without understanding this. There are some ad servers that will make this decision and see what this can be. But 15 beats 10 mm. and highest bid wins. Mm. They are picking this and they are making the most money from an individual impression basis, but it's suboptimal for overall revenue. Because if they made the decision to say, I'm gonna serve this here and this here, 16. If they changed it, 25. Mm. Which would they prefer? So, the ad server needs to know scarcity. All auction mechanisms need to understand scarcity in order to make suboptimal decisions on an impression level basis. 10 beats 50 in that case. That's that's not conventional thinking, but it works out. So how how does it how does that process work? Does it uh, be passing information from uh, how how do you feed that information into sort of the traditional ad server? Then? Is that a product you have or uh... yeah, it's a, it's an inventory allocation problem. Yeah. Um, and uh, surprise, surprise, we have some products to aid. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, wow, yeah. Wow, it's, yeah. It's it's, okay. uh, it's it's fun that way. Yeah. We've got uh, <laughs> we've got features that allows ad servers to make better decisions. Yeah. And the way uh, we're doing it currently, right, uh, is that uh, we have some tools that allows every ad server request from a page to the ad server mm -hmm. uh, be populated with um, key values yeah. that indicate values. It basically separates the gems from the averages yeah. from the duds, <laughs> right? And that's all it really needs to do. Mm -hmm. It's not, it doesn't, you know, some people may say, why not send every bid into the ad server? It doesn't matter. The ad server is still going to make a decision based on highest bid wins. Yeah. All you really need to do is you need to take your entire stack and particularly as publishers are looking towards automating deals with private marketplaces and such and you might have P4 sponsorships, P8 line items and let's just keep it simple, P12 price priority. Yeah. So this is where direct is. And traditionally, an SSP is down here, right? And then sponsorship is up here. Yeah. So as publishers start to work directly with buyers to strike deals at at uh, you know scarcer deals. Yeah. You know the buyers just say, I really only want five to seven percent of your inventory. 
the publisher needs to know uh, how best to break that up, right? Direct sold values inventory differently than the indirect channel. Mm. Direct sold uh, are using different mechanisms to measure. They are using different targeting criteria. RTB, much of the growth of RTP, RTB was based on uh, targeting individuals, mm -hmm. retargeting, etc. Mm -hmm. And our product, by the way, is called real-time pricing. So what we do is we indicate the top 30% of value from the indirect channel and we say carve out somewhere in here. Yeah. And we're going to tell you every one of those, cha-ching, cha-ching. And you can allow that to either, as a publisher, you can allow that to compete with your direct line items. Mm -hmm. Uh, some publishers may even move that slightly ahead. The ad server will still deliver to the pacing requirements yep. and to the performance objectives of the direct sold line mm -hmm. items. But what happens is they make the same amount from direct, but they've just increased the value of their indirect channel yep. by even as much as 70%. They've increased their fill rate with an RTB mm. by 100% or more. Mm. Okay, so smarter yield optimization effectively. Smarter yield optimization, yeah. holistic in that you're considering all of your channels yeah. and you're allocating your inventory in a way that makes you the most money while still achieving the best performance and value for, for um, both buyers, your direct buyers and yeah. your automated, uh, automated deals okay. and such. All right, uh, excellent. Thanks, Jordan. You're uh, welcome. Thanks for that overview. And, uh, Look forward to seeing more of this. And uh, that was uh, Trade Talk TV. Thanks. See you next week. Thank you.